What's up, guys? Dr. Adrian Chavez here with PersonalTrainingPrep.com. And today I want to talk to you about the three energy systems that you're going to have to know for ACSM CPT exam. So uh, when you're taking the exam, uh, a lot of people get caught up on really understanding uh, these processes, knowing exactly what's going into each of these energy systems, what's going on with glycolysis, each step of the Krebs cycle, what's going on with oxidative phosphorylation, and you can spend a lot of time on things that aren't really that important. So uh, this is a question that I get often from the students who uh, participate in my course. By the way, um, if you go to personaltrainingprep.com, and I'll have a link below, you can get a free three-day trial to my course. If not, you don't have to sign up for it, but uh, I've helped over a thousand students pass the ACSM exam at this point. Um, and I'd love to help you as well. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to go over these three energy systems, kind of break it down for you a little bit and give you most of what you're going to need to know for the exam. Now, there's a little bit more details that you're going to need to know that I'm not going to cover in this video, but I want to give you a general overview so you get a better understanding of it and streamline the process of really understanding what's going on, why these energy systems are important and, you know, how they're relevant to your job as a personal trainer. All right. So um, first thing we're going to go over. So there's three different primary energy systems. We have the ATP PCR system. Uh, we have the uh, anaerobic system. So this is uh, going to include glycolysis and uh, lactic acid fermentation. And then we have oxidative and aerobic systems, which are going to include um, the Krebs cycle, TCA cycle, citric acid cycle. It's all the same thing for names. And then we also have oxidative phosphorylation, which happens in the mitochondria. Okay, so uh, we're going to cover these very quickly. I'm going to explain to you how they're relevant to different activities, and then hopefully you'll get something out of this video. Uh, so this first piece, ATP PCR system, also called the phosphogen system, you'll see that interchangeably in the exam. Uh, sometimes they'll refer to it as the phosphogen system. Sometimes it will be referred to as the ATP PCR system. system. Uh, this ATP PCR, ATP is a basic uh, form of energy. So you got to know this. If you don't know this, get it uh, nailed into your head. Adenosine triphosphate. So uh, this ATP PCR system creates energy by turning ATP into ADP and that creates um, energy from, from that process. So ATP is broken down into ADP and then, and then that ATP is regenerated by uh, phosphocreatine donating a phosphate and turning that ADP back into ATP. So this system is important for the first five to 10 seconds of exercise, um, you know, really just high intensity, short bouts of exercise, sprinting, uh, a lot of weight training is gonna be utilizing this ATP PCR system as well. And uh, it's gonna be, you know, more prevalent in type two muscle fibers, muscle fibers that, are, that generate a lot of power, a lot of um, force, but they uh, fatigue very quickly, okay? So I have another video talking about muscle fiber types. You can go check those out as well, uh, but it's gonna be more, more prevalent in these type two muscle fibers. So the, the, the mechanical needs, uh, the things that allow the system to, to, to take place are more prevalent in those, in those type of muscle fibers. Um, so this is why, and again, this is completely unrelated. You don't need to know this for the exam, but this is why creatine as a supplement works very well because it, uh, increases phosphocreatine in the muscles, which allows for a higher regeneration of ATP. It can cause you to have like one more rep uh, in a training session if you adequately supplement with creatine, especially if your creatine is low. Um, so this is going to rely on uh, you know the storage of ATP and creatine in the muscle, um, and that's just it's going to burn out very quickly. So it's going to give you some energy for a short period of time, then it's going to burn out. Then your body's going to rely on this next system which is uh, the anaerobic systems, uh, which include uh, glycolysis and lactic acid fermentation. So glycolysis is a breakdown of glucose. And we have glycogen stored in our muscles. Um, so glucose, glycogen, glycolysis, uh, you see that root word happening over and over again. We have glycogen stored in our muscles. Our, our uh, body will basically uh, you know, take that, break it down, put it through this process of glycolysis. Glycolysis will create two ATP, and two pyruvate molecules. And don't worry about the pyruvate right now. It'll be important when we get to the oxidative energy systems. But it'll create, it'll create two ATP, two uh, pyruvate. So that's a question that you might see on the exam. Okay, one of the things that you'll see is like, during a sprint, what energy systems is gonna be, or what energy system is gonna be relied on the most? Okay, you'll know during a you know 10 meter sprint, or something along those lines. But if you know it's a very short duration activity, it's gonna be the ATP PCR system. 
um, if it is something that's going to be, um, you know, 10, uh, you know, 30 seconds to two minutes, somewhere around there, you're going to look at the anaerobic systems uh, and those are going to be more important. So glycolysis, lactic acid fermentation, those are going to be more of a contributor to the overall energy demands of the body uh, during those types of activities. So ATP created uh, from the breakdown of glucose to ATP to pyruvate. The pyruvate goes and gets shuttled into uh, the TCA cycle. So we don't need to really worry about that right now. And then lactic acid fermentation. So that'll create lactic acid as well. That lactic acid will actually get fermented. That'll turn into more energy. Um, and that creates a process as well. I'm not going to go into detail about that. I go into more detail on my course. Again, check out the link below if you're interested in that. Um, and you know, I, I break all that stuff down in a lot more detail. The last is the oxidative or aerobic energy systems. These are the systems that are going to fuel longer uh, duration activities. So if you're doing, let's say you're running five miles, you're running three miles even. Um, if you're going for over two minutes, these oxidative systems are going to get uh, really be relied on a little bit more. Um, and that's, you know, in, in one of the things that I want to emphasize, um, during training, all of these systems or during exercise, all of these systems are working together to, to meet the energy, energy demands of the body. It's not like this one shuts off and then this one starts and this one shuts off and then this one starts. Uh, the, the, you know, saying that longer duration activity, uh, relies more upon the oxidative energy systems doesn't mean that the anaerobic system shut off. They're still, uh, contributing to the overall energy demands, but they're just not, uh, they're not the primary energy source at that time. So the uh, oxidative systems are also the primary energy source at rest. So as you're sitting there, your body is creating most of its energy. If you're not doing any type of exercise, most of the energy is coming from these oxidative systems. Uh, so we have the Krebs, TCA citric acid cycle, oxidative phosphorylation, that happens in the mitochondria. You might get a question about that what um you know oxidative phosphorus actually happens where and you got to answer you got to know that happens in the mitochondria again a lot of detail that i'm not going to go over in this video specifically um it's a primary energy source during longer duration training so you'll get something like w during a marathon what's the primary energy source that the body is going to be rely on and you're going to say the aerobic energy systems or oxidative energy system so uh that's another question that you might run into uh, another thing that you're going to run into is how much um, how much ATP is created? Uh, so you might see like during um, you know the if you add if you put like two pyruvate into the citric acid cycle, what would that create as far as ATP goes? Um, not going to go into too much detail about that. That's a, I might make another video on that. Um, but again, just check out the course if you're interested in getting more detail and getting. You know, just like, I, I just try to break this down a little bit easier for you because the book is overwhelming. The three books the ACS in are pretty overwhelming. Um, and, and I've been teaching this for quite a while. So this is gonna be most prevalent in type one muscle fibers. So you really need to get this stuff down because you're gonna be working with clients um, who have different needs. So you might have a client who's a, who's a, a marathon runner and they wanna get better at their marathon time. Well, you need to know how to train these oxidative and aerobic energy systems and not necessarily so much on training these these you know, the ATP PCR system, the uh, anaerobic systems, you don't want to train those as much. You want to focus your training on the specific goals of your client. And that's a lot of what you're going to see on the exam is you're going to see a lot about training, uh, about programming, and you're going to see a little bit about this. Uh, this is probably going to constitute five to 10% of your exam. Every exam is different. Uh, I've, I've gotten feedback from hundreds and hundreds of students who have taken the course, who've gone through my course, who, and who have gone on to take the exam and really tried to weave a lot of that, uh, you know, information about how much uh, is covered on each specific uh, domain. But the questions are random. Every exam is different. Some exams go really heavy on the risk stratification. Some go really heavy on the behavior modification. Um, and then, you know, you'll generally see just a decent amount of questions on, on, you know, exercise programming. And this is, you know, part of that foundation, part of that exercise science that you need to understand in order to know how to properly program exercise for your clients 
and even just take you know exam questions and answer them properly all right so i hope this was helpful um hope this kind of broke down this for you gave you a general overview again my goal is to give you a general overview if you really want to nail down and learn these topics uh you got to dive into the book you got to get the stuff in front of you You have seen in writing you have to go over and over again a lot of the exam is memorization all right so if you're interested in the free three-day trial that i offer for my course you can click on the link below check it out for three days it's not for you no big deal uh if it is for you I offer a pretty competitive price like 67 bucks most of the time sometimes i offer discounts on that um so you can get the course 67 dollars less than the price of a book uh, just one of the books that you purchase from acsm and i promise you you will receive more value from my course than you will from any of the books from acsm and it will streamline your study process all right so thanks for tuning in uh, let me know if you have any questions below and I'll talk to you soon.